You want your thoracic oncologist to be deep in the weeds of molecular medicine and not freak out when you've asked for a full understanding of your DNA, your RNA, and your protein expression. Hi, I'm Marcia Horn, CEO of ICANN, International Cancer Advocacy Network. We've had 29 years of direct patient navigation, pan tumor. I chaired the Biomarker Collaborative, and ICANN runs the Exxon 20 group for EGFR Exxon 20 Warriors, HER2 Warriors, the NRG1 Energizers, and we run the Met Crusaders. It's really important to understand what the molecular diagnosis is in order to understand what the therapy is ultimately going to be. So it's not just a matter of knowing that you're non-small cell lung cancer. It's a matter of knowing, do you have an actionable mutation or amplification or fusion that's going to direct your precise therapy throughout your journey? And so, for instance, we have fusions that are ALK fusion positive, ROS1, in track, RET positive, and the latest NRG1 fusion positive. And that's all found through RNA sequencing um, and other methods. And when we get to the mutations, we obviously have EGFR mutations. We have EGFR exon 20 insertion mutations. We have HER2 mutations, BRAF mutations. We have MET exon 14 skipping mutations. And then we have amplifications, MET amplifications, HER2 amplifications, many amplifications to, to understand and deal with in the therapeutic journey. It's really important when looking for a second opinion to make sure that second opinion thoracic oncologist understands molecular medicine. And so what you need to ask is, get me my DNA profiling, get me my RNA profiling, and I wanna know every detail about my molecular diagnosis. I also wanna know about protein expression. With the advent of antibiotic drug conjugates, ADCs, we're entering a whole new era where protein expression is absolutely critically important, either from archival tissue or fresh tissue. So you want your thoracic oncologist to be deep in the weeds of molecular medicine and not freak out when you've asked for a full understanding of your DNA, your RNA, and your protein expression. We at ICANN and the Biomarker Collaborative think it's pivotally important to be understanding how cancer is evolving and reacting to the medications that you've been on. So in a perfect world, we'd want to see tissue and blood profiled at each pivot point of disease progression, disease growth. And that's the way to understand what resistance mechanisms are emerging and what therapies should now be brought to bear as this cancer is clearly evolving, or maybe it's not evolving, but we want to chase the cancers that are evolving and chase the cancers that are changing their stripes altogether and histologically converting from one cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, into another cancer, small cell lung cancer. The most important item for a patient and family to consider upon diagnosis is what cancer group, what biomarker specific group should you be connected to? Please ask your healthcare provider or ask anybody in the cancer space. It's really important to be attached from diagnosis to the support group that can bring you all sorts of different services. Free of charge, molecular profiling connecting services, connecting you to labs that can profile tissue and blood, clinical trials matching services, connecting you to investigators running important clinical trials in your precise mutation, amplification, or fusion, direct patient navigation, watching you and, and helping you at each pivot point of disease, social media support, 
Social media is a really important connector where we can connect patients by geography um, and connect patients by drug being used or clinical trial being used. So really important to understand which groups are your groups. You might have more than one group. So the Biomarker Collaborative has as its top mission the introduction on diagnosis or on diagnosis of metastasis of the patient and care partner to the appropriate biomarker specific group. We in the biomarker world understand what the phase two trials are, the phase three trials, and the novel phase one trials. And we'll be able to tee up the conversation that you, the patient and care partner, can in turn bring to your community oncologist anywhere in the world, or bring, frankly, to your thoracic oncologist anywhere in the world. You might have a community setting closest to you, and you might be dealing with a thoracic oncologist hundreds of miles away at an academic medical center or comprehensive cancer center. At ICANN, we have the Exxon 20 group, the Met Crusaders, and NRG1 Energizers. And each of those three groups, whether we're dealing with EGFR Exxon 20 warriors or HER2 warriors in the Exxon 20 group or our Met Exxon 14 skippers who are in the Met Crusaders or our lung cancer fusion positive NRG1 patients in our, in our NRG1 energizers group, all of those groups get oncology nursing services. We have a fabulous oncology nurse named Carm Fazio, and she does miracles every day connecting the patient and the care partner to exactly the right talking points that the patient or spouse or partner can then bring to the actual treatment team. We think it's absolutely inexcusable for any treatment team to let a patient languish out there with intractable pain or nausea or diarrhea or rash and or perinechia or appetite suppression, whatever it is, we want to make sure that the patient and the care partner are outfitted with the alternatives that patients and care partners uh, need to know about. If a nausea drug doesn't work, there are other anti-nausea drugs that, that can be reached for. So we compiled the talking points in the patient's voice to ask for those different medications that are crucially important in the collateral fixes that we all need to see as people are going through the patient journey.